Uh, our next speaker is Josef Urbanovsky. Uh, Josef works uh, as a so senior software engineer at Red Hat as a part of networking services team, and he is going to speak about automated network performance testing in Python. So please welcome Josef. Hello, everyone. So as it was mentioned, I work at Red Hat and networking services team where I get to interact with pretty smart people that are actually working directly on the kernel and their related technologies. Uh, but developing kernel is not my specialty, and instead I just support them with automated testing that they require, as well as the infrastructure around it. And as today we are on the Python conference and nobody wants to hear about kernel and such low-level stuff, we are going to stick to talking about our framework that's written in Python. So what does it actually take to test a network? So consider that you have a situation, you connect your laptop to the network, and you need to try whether you have connection. So maybe you open up a terminal and run ping utility to server you know, let's say Cloudflare or Google DNS server, and you get a connection. But maybe you want to stream some video, so you actually open up a browser and run a speed test. You get your results, you do with that what you will. So in a very simplified scenario, this is what we are actually trying to achieve here. Uh, and what are some problems we are trying to solve? First, we have uh, manual testing that, let's put it simply, we can have some shell commands. Let's say you have two machines connected back to back, and you want to configure just IP addresses on them, bring the interfaces that are connected up, and run a ping just between them. That's quite simple, right? But what happens when you actually start to add some complexity? Let's say you add some network layer, for example, VLAN, and you want to change the test bed, reconfigure it, it can get quite tedious fast. So you start to maybe put your code into some shell scripts, you start to parameterize it, but yeah, nobody wants to really configure or take care of shell and instead you are going to try to scale with something else. But that's not only problem. You are also going to hit a problem that you are working with development kernels, which you don't want to run on your local machine, and you want to run them remotely. So with that, you actually arrive to needing of some SSH-based taste harness, where that is going to take care of installing, copying the machine, copying tests to your machines and so on. There are another problems that you can also hit, and that is problem with multi-hosting, that you are going to have multiple hosts that you want to run your test through, and also that these hosts are, might have different configuration, and you need to solve the portability. That's where LNST comes in, which stands for Linux Network Stack Test, and it solves almost all of the problem that we have talked about at the beginning. So as I said, it's a Python framework, so we are not trying to scale with Bash. It automates the network configuration, it solves the portability of tests, and serves as a test repository. What do I mean by that? That actually all the tests we are using in Red Hat are stored in our GitHub repository, available to all of you. And LNST in its core is actually multi-host and multi-process application, meaning that we are able to run our uh, framework over multiple hosts, and we have multiple services that are communicating together. Just two quick disclaimers, uh, one regarding security. You actually need full root access to run LNST because you are configuring the network, and LNST is doing that on your behalf, and maybe some packages that you might find on PyPy or similar are going to be outdated, and currently we are distributing our code only through GitHub. And how about our software architecture? It consists of two main processes, controller and agent. So controller is basically API for the tester to abstract him from all of the things we've talked about at the beginning. So it's going to find suitable setup for you. It's going to distribute the code and control the execution. And how do we distribute that code and how do we control the execution is that we have a custom RPC protocol that is communicating from the controller to the agent as well as takes care of the communication between agents. Next, we arrive to the agent, which is RPC server application, and in minimal sense, it can be regarded as a test executor. 
what control tells agent to do, uh, agent actually executes. And each command that is executed on the agent is done uh, in a isolated environment and it's reported, its results are reported back to the agent instance. Here we have our deployment architecture and we can see that we have multiple machines. Uh, this is just a sample deployment architecture that how it might look like and we have at the top two agent machines in red and one controller machine at the bottom. So let's talk about controller first. Um, it's basically our local machine uh, that is going to be running the controller application. Uh, you can develop from there and you don't have to reconfigure agents by yourself. This is the only place where you actually write the code. Next, we have red machines that are agents. They are a running agent process and they are actually the command executors. They are controlled by the controller. Uh, we also have lines between them connecting and some network interface cards. Those lines are actually network that are separated, which is quite important to us. So let's talk about the white uh, network first, and that is our actually management network. We are configuring, uh, uh, controller is actually configuring the agents and telling them what code to run, but we are also using this network for, let's say, power controls of the machines, provisioning, and so on. And at the top, you have a test network that you don't want to connect to your management network because there is going to be a lot of traffic and it's better to keep them isolated. So here, we can actually see our main building block of LNST, and that is going to be LNST recipe. Recipe in minimal sense is like your test. And what you need to write recipe is that you need to specify what kind of network you require, what to do, how do you want your network to look, and what tests do you want to be executed. So if we look at the top to the class definition, we can see that we are deriving our demo recipe class from the base recipe, where base recipe actually gives you the functionality to solve all of the problems I talked about, so communication, finding the right machines, distributing the code. And then we have the network requirements where you can see machine one and machine two. So we are requiring two machines and they are supposed to be connected with one NIC back to back through label that actually means network that is called network one. Then you have your actual configuration and you configure IP addresses, bring the, network, bring the network interface up, and run the ping. At the end, we can see instantiating of the controller and giving control to the instance of the recipe to be run. For those who actually remember, this was the example we had as a manual testing. However, real world scenarios are not going to be this simple, and we are going to need some abstractions to actually take care of the more difficult configuration. First, the first kind of abstraction is LNST devices. So it's a package that shares uh, network device configuration. It gives you abstraction over each API that my the network device use. Then we have test package, which is actually shared test code. How you can imagine this is that you maybe have some utilities that measure network performance, you have ping, maybe the perf, uh, maybe the speed test and so on. Those are also Python classes, so you don't have to know how to write or how to uh, work with those frameworks. Next, we arrive at the point why we are actually using Python. And it's because of the recipe inheritance and also the mixins. So you may be aware what mixing classes are. And they are basically classes that allow us to use special type of multiple inheritance and it allows us to configure different classes with optional features and also use them in even different classes. So they are quite universal. And finally, we have found some common patterns in our test set as that is found in LNST recipe common package. And they are also in form of extensible classes or mixins. So let's talk a little about LNST devices package and it implements uh, API for the configuration of most used network devices. 
let's say in this example, we are going to be talking about VLANs. And this configuration is almost exclusively done directly through the kernel, but you are abstracted from this and you don't have to know what to do in kernel. However, one special thing that we have implemented is that we are copying this package to the agent dynamically each time instance of recipe is running. And what this does for you is that you can develop code just on the controller and it's going to be transferred on the agent for you. And like we can see on the red part of the image on the right, there is agent instance running and he has a device class as a base that gives you some kind of basic API, how the interface should look like, what are some methods. Then you actually have a sub device, which is every virtual device that VLAN is. It gives you some more specific configuration. When you finally arrive at the VLAN device that is actually instantiated on the agent and it has full control over the VLAN network. However, controller does not know about this instance, so it requires a remote device to be spawned, and this is some kind of wrapper that controller has so it can, it can control the VLAN device on the agent. Next, we have test package, and at the beginning of the presentation, I talked about running a speed test, and in short, this is some frameworks we have found useful over the years that measure the performance. It's shared test code, and I'm going to talk a little about iPerf, that is one of the most used frameworks for network testing. It's a basic client server model, and it has quite a lot of configuration and options, so that's why we need some abstractions. If you look at the right in the picture, uh, we have a base test module that uh, defines some interface that the device is supposed to, so the test module is supposed to use. And then we actually start deriving uh, more specific classes as iperf base that is shared between the controller and the server that configures basics of the iperf. And finally, we have iperf client and iperf server that are actually taking care of running the correct application on your side, reporting the results, and so on. Uh, what is interesting here that uh, this, based on the test package or rather test module that you pick, it's going to be again distributed directly and dynamically on the agent for you. So if you make change in this code on the controller, you don't have to again reboot the agents and so on. It's going to be copied for you. Uh, then we arrive at the recipe inheritance and recipe common module, and we can see some additional features that LNST provides in the recipe inheritance. As we can see at the top and the definition, we are not basing this class on base recipe, but instead we are using demo recipe that was in the first demo. And we can see that in the test method, there is a super call that is actually going to take care of the configuration for us, so we don't have to do that. And here, here comes our first mix-in in form of perf recipe at the top in signature. And that is going to help us to define interface and methods that we want to run the performance test. And you might look at the middle to the code and it might look a little bit extensive, but in reality, this is all generated for you dynamically. But what we can see here that uh, we are calling some perf package methods that will instantiate the hyperflow measurement that is actually taking care of the test package I talked about, the iperf client, iperf server, is going to spawn them on the right machines, get your results. And finally, we have uh, at the end a uh, perf report and evaluate method that is provided again by the perf recipe and it's going to make these results a bit more user-friendly. So not only we are able to run, res uh, able to run network performance tests, but also we are able to evaluate them with different evaluators that you can maybe compare to some numbers, see if it, the number is higher or lower than something, and so on. So we actually arrive at what we use in Red Hat and what is core for us. ENRT recipe package stands for early network regression testing, and it's built atop of perf common a recipe common perf package. And what is added value of this whole package is that almost everything we have found, we have found useful in creating performance uh, tests over the years has its own class 
and you are basically playing Lego, just trying to find correct pieces and put it together because there is very little code duplication as we have written quite a lot of tests. Uh, the core of this package is base ENRT that every recipe that we have and are running in production uh, ha extend this uh, class with various mixins to create custom configuration. So you would have a different mixin for, let's say, running VLAN compared to simple network recipe that would have only bare NICs. However, the biggest gain for the kernel developer is that LNST also has a database that contains uh, results of runs from various recipes. And you can, comp you can use this uh, you can use this to actually compare the performance of, let's say, your development kernel to a baseline kernel where we have measured results. And actually, by this way, developer can know whether his code improved, uh, the performance it got worse, so there is a regression, or it stayed the same. And here we are actually going to be playing Lego. And this is simplified UML diagram of the whole, whole hierarchy of simple network recipe that can be seen in the bottom right. So we have a simple network recipe, but we are going to start at the top from the base recipe. Base recipe was a class that we were uh, basing our first demo on, and that is going to take care of finding the right machines, working with uh, control and agent, having the communication, and copying files, and so on. Next, we are starting to add perf recipe and ping test and evaluate. And those give us control over test modules that provide us with some interface to run the performance test. So ping test and evaluate can run ping at the start of our configuration. And if ping would not pass, we would not even continue with the testing. And next, we add base measurement generator which is interface how the measurements are supposed to be integrated. And then on the right side, we add base subconfig mixin. And that again is interface how our more complex setup supposed to be connected to the whole recipe hierarchy. And in the middle, we arrive at the base ENRT recipe. That is actually the main building block of what we use in Red Hat recipes. And eBase ENRT recipe just connects all the previous pieces together. So it gives you control over the network with a lot of options through mixins. And also it gives you control over the execution of performance test as well with evaluation. Then we are arriving at the bare metal ENRT recipe, which by its name is a subset of topologies that we use for non-virtualized setups. So just bare metal. And these are specific uh, generators and configuration mixins that we require on bare metal hosts. For example, if you want to disable some setting in BIOS or configure something directly on the card, that's what, that's what bare metal brings. And finally, we arrive at the recipe used in production, and that is simple network recipe. And it implements actually all the specific of its derived classes. So it's not only just interface or some API. And we add some more mixin in form of offload subconfig mixin on the right and common hardware subconfig mixin, which uh, reduce the code duplication even further. And uh, they allow us to explode the configuration settings metrics that maybe can be 32 or 64 different tests under a single recipe. So what actually differs LNST from similar frameworks? Um, to recap a little, LNST is a multi-host and multi-process architecture, so it can run almost unlimited number of agents by, that is controlled by one controller. Uh, we have test machine pool matching. What does it mean is that in Red Hat we actually have quite big lab, and LNST is able to pick correct lab with correct setup for you. And what, when this setup is found, it's actually configured based on your needs. And not only that, it's also going to be deconfigured, and every setting that you have configured to LNST is going to be cleaned up. Uh, what's different about our framework is that it actually, compared to PyTest, let's say, is not testing the code directly, but it's testing the binary code. So you are testing various code paths, 
and you are exploring basically how the kernel flows. Uh, again, the, our own implementation of RPC protocol allows the dynamic distribution of executed test code. So test package plus uh, the devices package is distributed dynamically. There is a very little code duplication in different network setups. So let's say difference between VLAN setup and simple network recipe would be just by adding the VLAN device. And also some new features we have added is that we are able to dynamically spawn containers and run agents as well as controllers under them. And we have had this uh, feature for virtual machines for quite some time. And finally, we also have ability to export recipe runs with Python objects, so you can do some kind of post analysis. And here are our links. If you found this topic interesting, we are always happy to see new users or even developers. Uh, thanks, Josef, for the talk. Uh, we have just one question, and that's uh, what about the compatibility with other distros? Yeah, so LNST is able to run mostly on Red Hat-based distros, so CentOS, RHEL, Fedora, but we have had some success running it on Arch and other distributions, but there are some tweaks that may be Red Hat-specific, but it's always quite easy to change that. Okay, we have one more. Uh, do you have any components that allow to configure routers and switches? Yeah, we have actually thought about that, but as of today, we don't have that, but in the future, we might look into that. All right, so thank you, Josef, for your talk. Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomé. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládať tak, že ňou zatraciem, alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc z ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. 
technológie ľudskou rečou.